Okay, see you later. What's up, everybody? Welcome to The Lost Spot. I'm your host, Sebastian, out of Oklahoma City. I'm hanging out with Nick from God Size Records. What's up, man? What's up, Sebastian, man? Glad to be here tonight with you. Yeah, man, we've actually got, I've got to know you a little more. I've met some other people. We've been in the backgrounds kind of talking. We were hoping uh, to play a music video from a band that's under the record label, what, Rain, Rain of Z. Yeah, Rain of Z. And I don't think we're going to be able to do it, but it's possible. He still might get the email. If he does, he'll forward it to me. I'll download it. And we will jam that song. Apparently, it's like a super cool new music video they came out with. Right, yeah. You can also go to the God Size Records YouTube page and find it there. It's called Ignite. And um, there's a few other tunes there you can check out as well. And, uh, yeah, man. Um, either way, if we don't get to play it, just go <laughs> check it out on the interweb <laughs> whenever we're done here. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Hey, don't leave the show. You got to yeah. go. Don't leave the show to watch it. Watch it afterwards. Yeah, <laughs> afterwards. It'll, it'll be way better afterwards. So let's talk about God Size Records, man. So the record label's fairly new. Is that accurate? Yeah, yeah. It's for uh, from like concept uh, to inception. Yeah, it's it's relatively just a couple years old. Okay. Yeah. What, and what made you decide to start a record label? And talking to you before. Uh, we wind up going live. You know a ton of the music industry, lots of band members, lots of people in the industry. So what made you decide to go ahead and start God Size Records? Um, well, I mean, so basically, yeah, it's like why, a, a large question all the time, like why a record label? Like, you know, it's a very kind of anti-record label world right now. But, um, dude, I'm just a nerd. And like, I just wanted to have a place where like I could help these bands that I really dig and, 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 you know, try to use all of the things that I know how to do and the people I know and, um, just various opportunities that I have to try to, I guess, you know, try to help elevate these bands. And, um, you know, I've had, uh, been blessed to work with a lot of cool people and be could put into some cool uh, situations and presented with rad opportunities. And, and so I just wanted to be able to share these things with, uh, you know, bands that I dig and, and believe in and think that other people will dig too. And so, you know, that's, that's pretty much it. It's uh, just kind of navigating my way through everything right now. You know, um, it's a, uh, it's a pretty dubious task, you know. <laughs> did, um, you, did you know a lot about starting record label? Uh, real quick, Sam. Sam is Sam is here. Uh, it says Sam McIntosh. He's watching. He's here right now. So what up, Sam? <laughs> so did, was, my dude. did you do a lot of research on uh, starting a record label? Did you just kind of jump into it? That's I just jump into things. I don't yeah, know I how mean, to do it. I didn't. I, I didn't actually. So initially, you know. Um, I, I had another buddy that I, uh, you know, was working with and we had a meeting with a cat that was running, um, a bigger label at the time, you know, and so we went and met with him and just kind of pitched this idea and this concept to him and he, and he dug it. And so kind of brought us on, um, as like an umbrella to, to their label. And, um, so you know, fast forward a little bit, that fell apart. And then I was working with a cat named Lucas Joyner at a record label, Artist War Records. And they were doing some really cool shit for a minute and um, got hooked up with a rad new distribution company. And, you know, kind of just uh, brought God Size Records over to there and then um, kind of became their, their flagship incubator um, label at this intercept distribution company. And, um, so that's where we're rolling. It's a really great situation. You know, I couldn't be happier. The company is super sick. Uh, yeah. How, go, how, how do you poach bands to join, to be on, like do bands come to you or do you see a band and you like their sound and you kind of shoot them a message or whatever and be like, Hey, I'm Nick with God size records come fucking be a part of my team. <laughs> you know, yeah. 
Yeah, I wish that <laughs> I wish that that was how it went down. Um, like, trust me, there's like some bands out there that are super sick, and I'm just like, whoa, I want those bands. But um, um, yeah, no, it's like, uh, um, both, both honestly, like I've been approached by, you know, various management or or artists, you know, um, uh. that you know, are looking for an alternative, you know, or, or maybe looking to have more control and, and more or less just looking for like a team, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Um, mm-hmm. And that's kind of what, you know, I've been able to provide for some artists and then, and then, yeah, then there's artists that I'm like, yeah, I totally would love to sign them, you know, and, and develop them and help them, you know, find the, their uh, potential, you know, so uh, you, yeah, man. You, you said teams earlier. Uh, do you feel like as a record label owners, do you feel like you have multiple teams because you have the band, right? So when you sign a band, you sign the band. A lot of times those bands have a manager already. Right. And do you, do you have to like, I would assume there's multiple teams that you have to deal with. And do you have other people in place to help man- facilitate all of that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We've got a great team at God Size Records, and then we have um, God Size Booking as well, mm-hmm. which, you know, yeah, we've got some agents there. And so we're able to facilitate, you know, you know, different aspects of touring and, and all that. And it's a, it's a pretty full, you know, full service label. So, you know, yeah, we do have various people to deal with. They're various uh, team members, or if they don't, you know, have management, then we also, we do that as well. So okay. sometimes, you know, we, whatever needs to be done, you know, we can, we can handle it or find some people that can, you know, um, have you ever, that, picked, have you ever picked up a band that like was not, you thought maybe were had it more together and then you realize you got to provide them with like everything else that maybe you didn't think you would have to at first. <laughs> I mean, not, not so far yet, but I mean, I've, I've been involved with it in different capacities, you know, different labels that I'd worked at prior to, you know, this one or uh, just different, you know, capacities of working with bands and, and, and definitely mm-hmm. seeing that, you know, uh, like I say, you know, like a, a reality check, you know, like, oh, shit, this this band is not it, you know, or these this guy is not built for this, you know. And so, right. you know, it, that kind of can always, you know, can, I, uh, can I like definitely. To- yeah, I don't, it's hard to talk about without be, uh, being detailed, <laughs> so. Right, right. But I would I would think that, you know, you hear a band, you like them. And I've seen it happen just with uh, recently with friends and stuff like that. You know, sometimes you think a band may be ready and they're just not ready to be a part of a team. Because as as a, as someone who has a label, getting a band onto your record label obviously has to benefit you financially as well as the band. Or there's just or otherwise you're just doing all the work and you're putting all your efforts into it and not not gaining anything from it so what would you say you do for a band and how do they help out your record label by signing them for instance redefined is recently signed to god size right which is awesome i love that band so so there has to be some sort of mutual benefit for you and them so what would that mutual benefit be um well, you know, Redefined as a band, they've been, you know, they've been doing it collectively for, mm. you know, decades. But as, as as that band, you know, they've been doing this enough where, you know, they've got a couple EPs out and they've been hitting their market hard. And, you know, uh, for them, like they feel like maybe they've hit a ceiling where they're at, you know, and they're they're looking to take that next step, you mm. know, and find you know, a broader audience, um, you know, better tours and, um, and just start kind of moving out of like just being a, 
you know, killer mm-hmm. band mm-hmm. from the Southeast and, mm-hmm. and becoming a band that's, you know, nationally recognized, uh, at least to some from? degree. Are they from South Carolina? North? Yeah. Yeah. South is, Carolina. Is that Southeast? I'm not yeah. doing geography. <laughs> I'm not doing yeah. geography. Yeah, I'm you like- may be I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In, in my head, for some reason, South Carolina. I guess it is. is it near Florida. I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It touches. They touch. God, I think, I or maybe they don't touch in in Georgia. And I think they touch right Florida. there. Yeah. Yeah, but they they party right there. Like there's like a bay between them or something. Maybe I don't know. But yeah, I, <laughs> I feel like I would have known. I feel like I would have known that my senior year of high school, and I forgot now. Cause I, I am horrible with you know I see you I like I know a lot but I also don't know a lot. It is what it is. That's yeah, why we got maps, yo. That's right. That's why we got. In fact, I don't, that's why we got GPS. I don't even look at a map. If I got to go somewhere. I'm not pulling a map out. Hey Siri, take me to uh to wherever I need I need to go. Gotta that's get you a map, Sebastian from Raquel. <laughs> yeah, maybe I'll get one. You know, I actually did. I was on my way to Louisiana one time, and my GPS. Uh, didn't work. There was no service, and I was lost, dude. Like in the woods, like on a main road, but like in the woods, scary. And I luckily found a gas station, and I didn't even want to. It was like I was hesitant to walk into the gas station, like vampires are going to be there. Yeah. But I actually, I actually bought a map and I used the map. So I luckily I'm, I'm young, I'm old enough to know how to use a map if I had to. I don't that's think what, I, not everyone can do that anymore. That's what I tell the dudes touring nowadays like i still remember the days where we had to like print off a bunch of map quest yeah. you know, papers and it was like this whole folder of like how we are going to get across you know point a to point b to point c there was no gps you know <laughs> no. you had a Rand mcnally map <laughs> you know and you folded it out and uh use your map quest directions that were printed out which were sketched let's Let's be real. Sometimes you'd be following that. And <laughs> I'm going to drive into a lake if I follow <laughs> these directions. And so you still had to rely on a old school map, you know? Do you, so do you, do you, I mean, when bands go on tour, I would literally suggest, hey, get a map just, just in case. Cause you never know where you're going to go where you're recept. There's some dead spots in the United States. It's just there. There's just no reception. Oh yeah. There's yeah. No yeah. Reception. Okay, so you have the you have the record label and you have the booking now, and those are I know on your website they're all part of one, but those are two separate things. Not everyone because we talked earlier about uh, Puya, uh, right. which is a band that I've listened to for a long time, and I saw them on your website, but they were on the booking site. So just because you do booking for them does not mean that they are part of the record label. Correct. Yeah. No. Yeah. Christian Lawrence, uh, one of our agents at uh god size booking he he represents puya but puya is currently um you know writing and recording new material and and shopping for a label you know if who knows you know perhaps but but right now yeah they're definitely um they're feeling good about themselves and what's going on so they're gonna look and see what they can what kind of doors they can knock down you know and um you know i am god size is just a you know, it is an independent, just a smaller label. So, you know, that's a cool name, though. God size. It sounds like a big label. Like it sounds huge because you're God size. The God yeah. size. That's awesome, right? Like, I came up with that on the toilet. <laughs> nice, dude. Nice. Yeah, dude. Hey, sometimes the best things come to you when you're taking a shit, dude. I'm saying, <laughs> that's the way it is. I'm, I'm saying, and yeah, it was way better than what the what the previous idea was. Uh, <laughs> what was the previous idea? Like uh, like grassroots records, I think, or something like that. You know was, what? That, that was floating in my head, and I was like, and it just didn't have the. It, it had the right like feel, like uh-huh. to the to the head and the heart, uh, but like it didn't really feel like a label that would you know release like hard rock or heavy music, something more like jam bandy or or mm-hmm. something like that, and mm-hmm. so it just didn't feel like it captured the essence and that's why i was like you know just sitting there just thinking like you know what would and obviously you know everybody I, always says everybody always asks me if i got it from the pantera you know song oh because, yeah and um obviously that's a great song and 
definitely representative of what I, I, I think mentally and, and, and whatnot in regards to it. But yeah, it didn't really, it was just kind of like, I was just trying to think of something, you know, like you said, like just big and, and massive mm -hmm. and God size. <laughs> so. Yeah, I, I think, I think if you were on with grassroots records, which is also a great name, I feel like you would, like you said, it would be more niche. Like to me, I would have assumed you played more kind of like a, uh, cool. like a Louisiana kind of folk kind yeah. of sound with, with that. Yeah. yeah, Americana with with the name like that with God size, you can kind of go anywhere with it. If you want to do hip hop, you wanted to do uh, uh, yeah. rock music, you you kind of go anywhere. Now that brings me to a question of: Do you sign mostly like hard rock bands? I mean, yeah, that's what I'm. That's what I'm into. I mean, that's that's my niche. That's what mm -hmm. I am. I mean, I my I love literally all music. I'm I'm a nerd. Like I I. You know, it's I have a couple of bands that uh, we've released uh, singles, you know, that are kind of more country rock, really cool tunes. Oh, you know, good friends and um, and great songs. Um, and yeah, man, I've actually talked to a couple of people that are, you know, uh, hip hop, you know, about, you know, releasing a couple singles or something and seeing where it goes. You know, I'm not I'm definitely not trying to you know, pigeonhole one way or another, you know, you mm -hmm. think of the, the great labels growing up, you know, Electra Records, you know, they had the Eagles or, you know, the Doors and Motley Crue and Metallica, you know, or Stevie Nicks or somebody, um, you know, so I mean, they, great music is great music, you know, so if I can release great music to the world, I will, you know, um, so, but yeah, mainly, you know, if, if it had to, you had to pick one category, you know, I guess it would be uh, the hard, you know, hard rock, heavy metal. That's pretty much what is that as of right now, that's all you have on your label is hard rock uh, and metal bands as of, as of, as of today. No, I, I have a few artists that are, you know, more of the rock and roll country rock leaning thing. Um, Havala which is like a side project for a couple of dudes um, in some bigger bands. And then um, an artist named Bradley Allen Coco, who uh, <laughs> is uh, got a great new like country rock song. Cool. And I, I, I've known him for, you know, 20 plus years. Um, and dude's just, dude, dude just busts his ass and works so hard to uh, make an awesome song and, 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 just works hard as shit. And I was just like, your hustle needs to be, you know, at least given a shot. So like, um, yeah, so that's what I'm saying. So I'm not opposed to anything. If it's a good tune, it's a good tune. Not, not only, you got there's so many bands that have so many good tunes out though. Like, so have you ever heard a band and you're like, Oh, this is just, this is a great song. You randomly heard just random for some reason plays on your shuffle list because you're playing songs by whoever. And then you may look them up, realize they have like, you know, five monthly listeners on Spotify. They got like four Facebook, you know, fans. The songs are great because there's so many just artists that can do something great, but they don't push it. It's not going to go anywhere. And I, I've seen it happen personally. Do you still pick, would you still pick a band up like that? Or do you want to see them have the numbers that they push themselves to be able to deserve to be a part of what you're doing? No, absolutely. Like I, 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 a good tune at least deserves a conversation, right? Like maybe sure. there's a reason, maybe they're just idiots. Maybe, <laughs> right. maybe they're just completely, you know, disconnected from social medias or whatever, you know, that's not a, unhealthy thing and it, it doesn't mean sure. that you know this band couldn't be successful like that could be the diamond in the rough you know that you know they just simply aren't inclined to do that type of thing and just like yeah you that's do that point. that's your job you come on you do that we'll do this and it's like perfect that that's, is, a, that's, a, that's that, a great that's a great arrangement that is such a good point that you just made because not everybody is in the social media, uh, does social media. And you're right, it is 
probably healthier to not have social media, not have a social media page mentally anyways, you know? Yeah. But, I mean, it sucks like, for you professionally, but if you, right. if that's the whole thing. So if, if, you, if, if the right team comes aboard and, and starts facilitating these elements for the, that particular artist, then boom, like, that could be that could be a great thing, and so so yeah, it'd definitely be worth a conversation if they're just sure. you know if they're if they're just a band that's not into even like being a band for real, like that's just some shit we did and put out, you know. Then you're like, yeah, probably not. There's probably right. not a reason to pursue this, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But, but if they're an actual band and they just aren't, you know, because I st- I uh, deleted my Facebook uh, account. I'll uh, be, be right for about a few months before I started the podcast. I deleted it. And the only reason why I started one back up was because I was, I was going to have the podcast and one way to be able to get your stuff out there uh, from a marketing standpoint right now, anyways, is social media. Like you can share YouTube videos. Like we're going live right now on, on, on Facebook. I can share my, when it goes on Apple podcast or it goes on Spotify, uh, you know, iHeartRadio. I have a means to share it. Without that, it would be harder to share unless you just push. Hey, buddy. Hey, <laughs> I'm doing a podcast right now. <laughs> yeah, right. What do you What do you bring you? A cup of coffee. A smoothie. Ooh, nice smoothie. What kind of smoothie? Berry flavor. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome, man. But yeah, so so I'll just say I started the the podcast shit. because of of social media, and you know, you would think bands would also maybe want to take that plunge but you're right they may not they may, might not be in their belief system to do it or they just don't want social media so it's at least worth a conversation yeah it's a, uh, every uh, it's worth a conversation that's what i say all the time and you know if it don't work out it don't work out but shit it could be a really cool thing that everybody else is sleeping on you know yeah, 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 yeah. You know when you whisper, I'm doing a podcast right now. We could hear that. <laughs> we can. Well, yeah. I, mean, <laughs> I just didn't want to be. It, it seems more polite. To to whisper, son, to yeah. whisper it, Yo, motherfucker, what the fuck you doing in here? Like, <laughs> hey, hey, man. I know my, my kids haven't come in yet. I'm surprised that they've never come in while I'm doing one. But it's it's gonna it's gonna happen eventually. It's it never happen. fails. Like I'll probably have there'll probably be another son trickling in at some point. Like, yeah, yeah, be, yeah. Be like, oh, I don't care. Get fucked and. You know, are they into me. are they into music as much as you are? Um, no, my the, the my youngest son he he's uh, he just turned ten um, in June and yeah he seems to be fairly interested in you know various interesting like he likes like Papa Roach and and Disturb oh, nice. and uh, yeah um, things like that but. Uh, you know, you know, it's a thing, man. It's like it doesn't seem like kids are as interested in bands and stuff They're anymore. Not. So They're not. that's what I'm trying to. I'm trying to crack the code, man. So it's like figure out how wh- how to make this cool and viable to to the youth again. Because it's like, yeah, it's just it's completely, you know, all this TikTok and YouTube, you know, generated. Uh, well, I mean, we're on YouTube now, but. You know, that's like all they're fascinated with is uh, the video games. It seems like, and um, all this. Uh, I don't get into it. I guess I'm I'm slow on the take with the with yeah. the gaming, but it's big. I, it's a big world. It's a lifestyle now, really. It really is. You know, I have a, so I have a twelve year old, and I have a twelve year old and a five year old, about to be six. And every time we're in the car, if I'm driving, you know, and the wife's in the car, I, I turn up my heavy metal music. I'll, you know. I'll, I'll, I'll play uh, some Fallen Universe or something the kids should not listen to, but I was doing it anyways. And I always look at my youngest one. Isn't this your favorite song? No, <laughs> no. She wants to hear, you know, pop music or, and my 12 year old wants to hear hip hop music. That's all they hear on TikTok, man. Like they don't really hear the good music. And I, you know what? I hate to say it, but it's almost like heavy metal is not as popular as, or at least as it once was, man. Oh, like, yeah, like, you know, and it should be. It should be because it's real freaking music. You know what I'm saying? Well, it's never been the you know the 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 most popular. You know, um, so it's always kind of been the black sheep. Really, I mean, rock and roll has no respect. You know, across the board, really. So it's not. But like you know, 
it's like the the cool underground uh element to it is like gone too it seems like it's um i, I you know i don't know what i don't know how to and that's crazy and, and listen i'm gonna tell everyone like the bands on god size records are good like i've heard of them they're the and some of the bands you do booking for it those are great great like, you have a great ear for music and what you want on your record label dude because you got some great you got some how many bands do you have on the label um okay so there's some bands you know like ricketts that are not really an active band so i mean you know we we, we are releasing new music um very soon, actually. S super sick new track. It's going to nice. blow people's minds. It's either going to be like the greatest song ever or like just like nobody gets it. Um, but, <laughs> right? There's no in between. <laughs> but they'll, love, they'll love the next one after that. So, um, but, uh, and then um, a band Left for Dead, uh, which I, you know, I'm in. It was in, uh, we, you know, we released a record that had like a huge long history. Finally put it out uh last year in 2020 and so like we're on the label technically and then you know i got like you know like i got um some other projects that are on there but you know uh for like the bands you know we're pushing you know we have like redefined and, and mantra of morta and heart sick and yeah. um you know a couple new bands that will <laughs> be announcing soon i'll go ahead and say it uh sin shrift uh, there will be announcing very soon. So if people are watching now, they know uh, they're awesome. Uh, uh, Hail the Horns, which is like um, a project with, with one of the artists that we have, uh, Mark Rizzo and Tony Campos and uh, Opus from Dead by Wednesday. Um, uh, so, um, and like I mentioned before, a couple of those other, you know, country rock artists, um, mm -hmm. Uh, Rain of Z and uh, Darker Than Fiction, who uh, are going to be starting a tour here, uh, like in the next two weeks, going out together. Um, Do you and have then, some, like do uh, you, go ahead, go a ahead, band like finish. another, and then a, and then a band like another Lost Year, you know, who has mm. done many things over the last decade, uh, you know, Billboard charting act, and um, and so we'll be releasing, um, we're actually re-releasing their last record, which came out on EMP, uh, Alien Architect. We're going to re-release re that record and um, and put out a couple of EPs that never actually came out as well. But That's you cool. got a, new, got a new, new record from them coming out soon too. So all kinds of different, you know, sub-genres of rock and roll. And um, yeah, man, lots of... Uh, Lots of cool music. So I guess like maybe like nine, nine bands, maybe. Okay. Do you ever want to re-release? Um, let's say a band did a song three, four years ago. They weren't a part of God Size yet because you, you, know, you hadn't started yet. But you really like the song. And you're like, there's we can, you know, produce this a little differently, make it a little more powerful. Do you ever want a band to re-release a song under your record label? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Have have done it. Am doing it. Nice, nice. There, there's no there. You know, it's like sometimes, like you know, or even like if, if it was like a great tune, like it, it, like, but like it was like, yeah, like you said, an older record, maybe not as popular, but like it's still like that song is awesome. Like mm -hmm. just because like you put it out five years ago doesn't mean like that's the only life it has to have. Like that's still, right. You can take the song. It's still a great song. And, you know, like there's a whole big world, you know, that hasn't heard that shit. So it's like, yeah, you know, you might feel like it's a old, tired tune that you've played out for so many years, you know, and you're just so excited about your new music. But it's like, yo, dude, that's still dope. a hit. Yeah, that could still be money. So, like, let's do this and show it to the rest of the world, you know. And, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I thought about that question because Papa Roach, when they came out with Infest, their Infest album, like in 2001, I think, or 2002. Well, I, I grew up in, in, in Vacaville, California, which is where they're from, and I had their old CD before they were famous. And like half the songs on their first album were like older songs before they even ever, and that DreamWorks put that out when they were still uh, signing bands. So I was yeah. just curious if you, if you did that. 
That's a lot of re- that's a lot of bands like first or second records is like old shit. <laughs> old shit, yeah. Or they like put out their first record and then the label will be like, "Uh, you know, it's the it's got legs. Let's put out a second release real quick. We need it fast, you know." And they'll be like, "Okay, like well, we got these old tunes, you know." I'm like, well, go re-record them, you know. That's and, so uh, that's so funny because you know bands think that. If they're not signed to a label yet, like, oh, man, we, maybe we're not good enough or whatever. It's like, no, half your songs you've written are probably good enough, but they still maybe want that one hit and then have all the other songs just to fill in. Back in the day, anyways, when bands were still doing mostly albums and not just, like, singles or, you know, short yeah. APs. So, anyways, man. pieces of work. Yeah, I, I, I love – singles are great in a content – driven world that we're in now you know youtube feed me content spotify feed me content you know content too yeah so fast yeah like you said so Mm -hmm. so you know a whole album's great but like can you spread that out over like 12 weeks or something (laughs) yeah yeah but um I miss music. I, I, miss, I miss the early 2000s music, man. I yeah, like I mean, the way the way things were done back then. But, you know, hell, here it is, 2021. Record labels are still around. We still got rock record labels, which is super cool. And like I said, everyone go check out the GodSizeRecords.com, right? Is that, the, is yeah. that your website? GodSizeRex. Okay, GodSize, GodSizeRex.com. That's and right. check out the bands. And like I said, check out Reign of Z, the music video that – we were going to play. We're not able to play, but I'm going to check it out when we're off of here. Is there anything that you wanted to mention that maybe I didn't talk about, um, about the record label that maybe you want to discuss, let the world know? I mean, um, yeah, I don't know. I feel like I said a lot of shit. Like, uh, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Uh, like, there's this band, Mantra of Morta. Uh, cool name, too, Mantra of Morta, man. That's oh, dope. bro, let me dope. just tell you. Dude. It's a must see religious experience live. Um, it's, 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 they're an amazing band. They're from Farmland, Indiana. Um, it, it, they've got a great story. Like the lead singer is married to the guitarist, her brother is the drummer, and then the guitarist and bassist are brothers and also their cousins. So, like, the whole, it's like a family band of, of badassness and uh i saw them i saw them on your website i think they were on the uh they're like right on the one of the first bands i saw i think they're kind of towards the top of of artists that you have yeah that that and that's such a cool name you kind of just want to hear them right is it a metal band um super yeah like um yeah dude like the the they're they're uh they just recorded an ep with uh ben shiggle at spider studios in cleveland if you don't know ben he's the lead singer for like switched if you remember that band, yeah, yeah, oh yeah, early two thousands band, and he's uh-huh. produced like every Chimera record, Drowning Pool, Straight Line Stitch, Machine Gun Kelly, even Trippy Red, some of that cool shit. Um, he does all the Ricket stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, dude, this EP is super sick. We're gonna be uh, releasing it August twentieth, August twentieth. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, it's coming up next month. Yeah. Yeah. Very like soon. A, month, a month from tomorrow. Shoot. Um. And so, dude, like, um, we'll be releasing a, a first video single here in the next few weeks. And um, I'm really excited for them. I'm really excited to see how everybody uh, reacts. It's, 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 it's like, it's my baby right now. I'm very excited. Um, and I think everybody's going to really, really dig it. So I'm excited for that. And like I said, you know, I uh, manage an artist named Mark Rizzo. Um, guitarist from El Nino, Soulfly, Cavalier Conspiracy, Misfits. All, all the good bands. For a the, brief period of time. Yeah, yeah. Oh, dude. He's like literally probably the most underrated shred guitarist in the game right now. How I mean, he's how do you go, hold on, hold on. Uh, how do you go from Misfits to like uh, El Nino, right? Like that's like not even in the same genre, I guess, but. Um, no, I mean, yeah, but like, you know, uh, Fast guitars. It's all. It's yeah, all, yeah, sure. No, that's true. Bit, you know. Yeah. Um, if rock but, and roll is rock and roll, man. I mean, there's different genres. It's all rock and roll. That's that's a that. I mean, that's just a that's a that's that is cool that someone's able to do. I guess a lot of musicians do that anyways. They jump and they probably like different styles of music anyways. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, El Nino and and Soulfly are are pretty pretty fucking different too. Right. And, right. And the dude's a master of the flamenco guitar. 
Um, so that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother vibe, you know, uh, the acoustic flex happening there. But, um, yeah, dude, we're releasing a, a greatest hits of, of his solo material. Um, that I'm really stoked about that too. Super honored. So, a um, lot of exciting things happening. The redefined new re- redefined record is going to be dropping here within the next 40 day, 45 days, whatever. Um, same with the Cinch Rift that I talked about earlier. Both those bands are actually going to be at the uh, Blue Ridge Rock Fest on yes, that's right, September 12th, Sunday. So, a lot of cool bands going to Blue Ridge Rock Fest this year. Definitely like the best. Uh, yeah. festival not danny wimmer i mean it, they did a great job jonathan sly and his whole team there they killed it so that's a sold out bro 100 I, I know 000. i saw i saw that it was sold out that i mean early too but you know people want to go back to concerts and see concerts so yeah i, I know a lot a lot of good bands are playing at blue a lot of bands that have been on the show i see them announcing they're playing blue ridge i'm like oh I, it's kind of far away from me. I'm not going to be able to make it, but that is definitely going to be a good show. And I hope Redefine do new songs. Uh, you know, they do that kind of a little bit of hip hop y kind of uh, rap rock. Uh, yeah. Which Jordan is, which Slick, is, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Jordan. Yeah. Super cool. He, I see him sometimes. Sometimes he plays video games on online. So, yeah. but anyways, anyways, man, that's about the time we got right now. I will tell you, I do want to get you back on the show for a live reaction video sometime soon. And we're going to do the Reign of Z. We'll watch it. We'll react to it. Give me a week or so. I'll get in touch with you. And I will figure it'll be kind of super fun to do. We won't go live with it. We'll put it on YouTube. But Nick, We'll man, do a couple. I'll bring, I'll bring a couple. Okay. I got the new Heart Sick video, Animal Instinct. Uh, we got a new, we got a new uh, Another Lost Year uh, video dropping. Um, so, yeah, man, we'll, maybe we'll just do something like that. We'll sit here and play a few yeah. videos, bullshit, and see what people think. Yeah, I'm excited be, about it. I'm excited. Hey, be, thanks. I'd be rad with that. Hell yeah. Okay, cool, man. Yeah, thanks, for Raquel, for uh, watching the episode. She said, great, great uh, episode tonight, guys. So it's always nice when we have Thank some you. people that watch for the whole the whole show and people jump on and off. But we have some of our regulars that are always on. So we appreciate that. Uh, Nick, I'm going to let you go. But I, I'm going to let you go on here. I want you to stay right there just for one second, though. Go check out God Size Records. Go check out all their bands. Super cool, dude. I, I Thanks again for being on here. And go check out www.theloudspot.net. We got merchandise. We're going to be in Nashville, August 6th through the 8th with the podcast convention. Uh, Sam will be there. Ava, my co-host who was not here tonight, she should also be there with us. And we're looking forward to having fun in Nashville. Go buy some of our merch. Go check out my YouTube channel. And please subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's like the hardest thing to do is get subscribers on YouTube. So we love to get – it's easier to get listeners on the podcast, like audio, than just to get people to watch – the, the, the YouTube channel, and then they're watching, but don't subscribe. So please subscribe. And also, if you're watching on Facebook now or later on, uh, go ahead and click that bell. I think there's a bell or a, a follow button so you can see when we're on all the time. All right, guys, that's all we got for you tonight. Nick, you stay right there. Don't go anywhere. Uh, peace out. Rock on. Much love. And I always say that before I find my outro song. <laughs> I should find the outro song first and then do that, right? But I, all right, here we go. All right. Bye, guys. Peace. This is the loud spot outro by nothing short of tragic. Is this all talk with no action? No. Is this my thoughts with distraction? No. Is this what I bought that's in fashion? Or is this the loud spot with Sebastian? Yes. Does nothing short of tragic have us back again? Yes. Does everything that's good really have to end? Yes. A pin post has a pin show, so to get more episodes, make an order, this is over. Thanks for watching our video. Don't forget to click the like and share button. Don't forget to go to our YouTube and subscribe. If you want to listen to our audio and pick up some cool merch, go to www.theloudspot.net. Peace out. Rock on. Much love.